welcome back to another episode of Twin Turbo. Today I'm going out to my friend Chris's house. He has a heated pool barn and it's really cold out so it's definitely going to help out. We are going to be throwing on all the parts again and I'm going to add the PMP connectors and do the lit kit install. So I do have to mention that I am working with Velocitech on this video. In exchange for this video and a link in the description of where you can purchase the lit kit, I got a discount for the product. That in no way, shape, or form is going to change my opinion on it. Recording all of today's content and I noticed a rookie mistake. So Chris had a furnace in the pole barn. It kept kicking on. When we were recording, it wasn't that loud. But uploading this content, it is in the background and it's kind of drowning out my voice and it's pretty frustrating, but it is what it is. I can't do anything about it. Lesson learned, background noise on microphones gets picked up very easy, so please forgive me on this one. I'll see you there. We got a bunch of car parts back here. So we got the lit snorkels right here. I kind of showed you guys these already, but uh, these are the glow ones. These are gonna be super sick. And I'm gonna be recording some before and after IATs with these on. So after I install the JV4, I'm gonna go out and see what the temperatures are. And after I put these on, I'm gonna go check the temperatures again and see if these are actually working. So these obviously aren't gonna work from a dead stop, but I would say 30, 40 miles an hour plus from the winds coming in and redirecting better. So yeah, man, as you see, we're ready. We got a lot of work to do today, so let's get this done. to the cone part of the passenger side filter, but they're exceptional customer service after a couple pictures and explaining them. They overnighted them to me, so I was at it. They went ahead and sent me another one. So we're going to be getting some new filters today. Oh, cool, look, engine stickers. Those will not be going on the car. All right, so here's the, uh, here's the fiber mounts. What happened was these screw right here down into the, the factory threading up by the strut mount and there's a little metal plate on the bottom there. And when I first got it, it was slightly bent and it was kind of like wobbling just a tad when I was putting it in. I didn't think it was a big deal, but when I went to go remove it, that bottom part came out. So I tried to super glue it, it didn't work, and I'm like, you know what, might as well just get these two. So engine is top notch, man, for this reason right here. They stand behind their stuff and yeah. I'll wrap you engine in the garage. Okay. We got the intakes out. It's going pretty smooth. I mean, this job's easy by now because I've done it so many times. Next, I'm gonna put the oil cash can in since I have all this room right here now. And then I'll throw the intakes on. Save the best for last, the JB4. <laughs> These are the connectors I've been telling you about. They make the PNP and the EWG. I'm not gonna do the EWG fuel connectors today. For today's sake, if you're installing the JB4, I would definitely recommend that you get these PNP adapters. It's right here where your sleeve is. You can see where I punctured into, I don't know, maybe you'll be able to see it, but I punctured a hole here with the posi tap. So what this allows you to do is not have to puncture a hole in your factory O2 harness. You're just gonna puncture the hole in this connector. So, so if you've already done this or you bought a Kia Stinger that has already been punctured here, there is a sleeve that slides over it, but I would highly recommend you get some electrical tape, man, and just run it over this hole. So hard to work down here, especially if your hands are bigger, but that's another reason I love these adapters. You look, all I gotta do is posi tap that, click it back in and I'm done, but yeah, you know, dust, moisture, electrical. That helps mitigate some uh, crap getting into that punctured hole. We are making great time. JV4 is installed, Velcro's back on, PNP connectors are installed, intakes are in. So I'm gonna leave the strut bars off for now. I'm thinking about getting carbon fiber ones too. 
and some carbon fiber shields. Either the matte ones from MGI Performance or carbon fiber, not sure yet, but yeah, let's leave those off because we're gonna need those off in order to remove this front bumper anyway. So right now what we're gonna do is go get some IAT recordings from the JB4. Now, if you're not gonna do a JB4 tune, what I would recommend, a true actual cold air ram air system would be as if you installed those snorkels and they connected straight to that box right here where they come out. You see what I'm saying? So the snorkels would go right into the box, get yourself a high flow air filter. That seems like that would be very functional. Worst case scenario, it's gonna look very sick, especially the glow. I love the concept of a glow. It's not too bright. It's not gonna you know, bring too much attention. The color is freaking perfect. Kind of like an off white. It's not too polarizing. I think it's gonna complement the, you know, the chrome accents, the brushed metal look inside of the grill. I did not paint those. So on the hood, on both sides in the same spot, you're gonna reach right back here. Chris, put that light back here a little more. Right there, the 10 millimeter bolt. There's one right there, equally on the exact same other side up here. So let's go ahead and remove those first. Second step. Now, since my car is on jack stands and jacks, I didn't have to bust out the swivel socket, but when you look underneath here, it's gonna be right below this notch here. You're gonna have another 10 mil bolt. Same thing on both sides. So I'm not gonna go over there and show you the same thing. It's in the same spot. Remove that, that's gonna be the second step. These are gonna be 12 mil bolts. You've probably taken these off before, but if not, these are 12 mil bolts that hold on the strut bars right here. Highly recommend that you guys get one of these. You don't wanna mess up your, your clips or scratch stuff up. These are really nice. They help everything pop out really easy there are three plastic clips down here guys that we're gonna have to do looks like there's one right there there's one right here and there's another one right there same thing we're gonna use our tool pop those out and then we're gonna get underneath the car and undo a couple clips so underneath yeah we got one two three four five Okay, so we confirm that the, you'll see these clips up here on the front bumper, guys. There's five, one, two, three, four, five, like I was just showing you. And then it looks like, yes, here, these are 10 mil bolts. So leave your 10 mil out and we're just gonna unscrew these. There's one here. And then there's the same, on the exact same opposite side up here. All right, one, two. Now I'm grouping everything together over here in the piles so you don't kick them all over the floor. I've done that so many times over the years. If you're in the Midwest and it's like 25 degrees out and your paint's freezing cold, just be careful because when you're like messing and pulling bumpers and paint's flexing, you don't want to risk the, you know, your paint spidering or cracking when it's really, really cold. So that's why we're in this heated garage because at first this thing wasn't one to come off, but with a little bit of force, as you can see, we popped off. I pulled up here first and then this kind of came out and then I came back here and I just kind of, I kind of put my hand here and pulled out because if you pull here only, this can start flexing and you, I'm serious, man. I don't trust this Kia paint at all. So I just, just be safe, but it gives, it comes off. This is a very easy job. Um, it's just a, you know, it's a lot easier if you have Jack. See, I pulled up there first, same thing. I'm going to come over here and just kind of. Be careful. That's it. Now, there's gonna be some harnesses and stuff. Uh, there's sensors up here. So we don't, you know, you don't wanna just yank it off. So we gotta be careful here. We're gonna pull it off lightly and kind of see where those harnesses are and go ahead and unplug those. Then we'll set the bumper on this carpet, so. Right here, this is the harness that you disconnect. It's not one of the harnesses that you push a pin in and pull it. It's a harness with a latch. You wanna grab the latch over on this side, bring it towards you, then pull it off. It looks like this. This is the latch right here. Very easy, bumper's off. Here's this intercooler with some nice plastic on it. Nice and conservative, small intercooler. We're gonna be replacing this. I wish I had an intercooler right now. This would be the perfect time to install it. We're gonna to have to unfortunately redo this all over again during the spring when the temperatures start rising. Let's let's study this, this air intake system. So we have our bumper on. The air is hitting the intercooler, radiator. This looks like a transmission cooler, if I'm not mistaken. 
probably, or oil. I don't see a good airflow up into the engine bay. I mean, obviously, I think they're hitting this shroud here, which is, I think we're gonna be removing this, but I don't see a direct. What's right here? Are you kidding me? Like they're expecting the air to come up in here and then travel over this and then go in there? Yeah. Wow, dude. Yeah, that's what I was eyeballing that earlier. Wow, this is not a good design at all for, I mean, it's great for the intercooler, obviously, and all these other coolers and radiator, but that's, Probably a major reason why this engine bay is so hot all the time, dude. The air's not hitting it directly like it's about to and go into the engine bay. It's relying on it to be sucked through here. And I don't like that at all. But at the same time, if you think about it though, the stock air boxes are connected. It's sealed. So the air's sucking in out here. So I guess it's not horrible. But for tuning, like what we have, this is not, not good at all. Let's go ahead and we got to remove this shroud, guys, okay? This inefficient shroud system's got to go. It's gonna come on like your car like this. This may help you get a better idea of what all bolts that you need to remove. So when you're looking at the car dead on, you're gonna have the two up top. There's gonna to be one extra one that goes to the car that's gonna hold on that snorkel piece, the factory one. So you have the two up top there. You have one right there, one right there. Boom, boom, okay? Same thing on the other side. So there'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then there'll actually be eight because the other two, like I said, one will be on the car. Uh, I'm gonna take off, looks like I'm gonna take the this one and this one off too, and those are 10 mil bolts. Let's start there. One of them's gonna be right there, and the other one's gonna be right there. So let's go ahead and remove those, and it's gonna be the same exact on the other side as well. All right, so I'm gonna be removing this one like I did over here, I removed that one and then the whole piece came off. So we're gonna do that one. Let's see, I already got this one off so then that'll slide out like the other one just did. And then the shroud, like I said, needs to come out so it looks like there's one there and one there. All right, so when I'm wiggling this around, look at this here, look at your bumper, right there. So we're gonna get, the, we gotta get that one off and that should remove it. Looks like there's one more. Oh yeah, she's gonna, she's fitting the bus. <laughs> oh yeah. Come in, Let's go over here. Right over here guys, there's another one. Honestly, this is common sense. You just kinda gotta start wiggling it a little bit and you'll see the stress points of where it's being held on. I mean, it's plastic, so it flexes. We're gonna have to reuse these rubber grommets. That's out. Okay, so now we have to go along this here and unclip these. Just follow it along. Once these are unclipped, we'll be able to remove this unrestricted shroud. Got all those clips out right here. And actually, there are two more on the side in that hole right there. So you have to unclip those as well. You can see the air filter now. The air is gonna scoop it directly onto that filter. This is a great scenario. Now we just gotta install the snorkels and throw the bumper on. So when it's pointing like this, the rubber seal is gonna have the R for right. So you want to remove the rubber seal off the factory snorkel and just apply it on here in the exact same manner. All right, man, one snorkel in. Let's get the other one in, same process. Boom. So you got some uh, non-functional hood scoops. <laughs> boom, boom. Okay, man. Now you can take it over from here from the electrical work. There is a cable, okay, that comes with your, with your kit. Looks like this. Here's the other end, I plugged it in. So it looks just like this end, I plugged the other end to here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna run this across, okay? So you'll have one and then you'll have the other one right here. And then we're gonna connect that to our harness. So in the meantime, what we have to do now, since we have the cable extension on here, they provide you with these uh, 3M. My buddy's going inside to grab some rubbing alcohol. We wanna prep the surface, cause it's dirty. So I'm gonna set these up here for now. So we're gonna have to wipe that down there and we're gonna have to secure this wire. We don't want this up against the radiator and or whatnot and just make a nice clean line and make sure there's slack and nothing's being strained where the LEDs are and stuff like that. So very, very simple. Just be patient here. I'm gonna lay it out as easy as I can as I go. We got a little bit of strain uh, relief here. 
And then I'm not gonna zip tie or clamp these down and click those into place uh, just yet. I wanna make sure I got everything ran the way I want it before I, before I push that down. Now, what I did is I ran this wire after I connected it, the extension wire. I just ran it back through there. So I'm not zip tying it down here. I just ran it back through there, okay? Comes back out here. Here we are again, clean the surface and we stuck the 3M clip on here. Uh, again, I haven't pressed it into place yet. I wanna get everything secure first. When the instructions say conduit, they're just talking about this sleeve. Um, kind of like what I did with the JB4 because it's so hot in here. So this conduit here, what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of wrapping it around and it comes split so you can kind of put it on before you feed it in. So I ran that in through here to the other side. It looks like the instructions I saw, someone zip tying it to this. I don't want those back in here. So I, I'm not putting those back in here. So I need to find a place where I'm going to install this to where it's gonna be secure and out of the way. We're gonna have two left over here. These are for adding more uh, items. So what I'm gonna do is just run a little bit of electrical tape over them to kind of cover those holes. I got the conduit ran and I have it measured pretty good. I'm gonna probably zip tie it down there as well. I mounted mine right there and I also utilized a zip tie hole. I know it's a little bit off, but on the other side of it, there's a uh, 3M tape, so it's very secure. I think it's in a great spot. It's right there. And then we're gonna just bundle all this up and do some wire management. And then it looks like next is the power cable, which is right there. And then once I know it's all secure, we're gonna go back through here and I'm gonna zip tie everything down and snap those clips. Now remember, when we removed all this stuff, we had this that we had to unclip through all those holes. So that's just gonna be laying on top of the intercooler, which is no bueno. So what we wanna do, come back over here. There'll be a hole over here, guys. And you'll wanna plug that back into the side. So plug that back in, do that for both sides. That's gonna put tension on this wire and bring it up. Then what we did is we see these little holes right here. We're gonna go ahead and slide some zip ties through there. It'll come out the other side here. That'll just give it that extra security. We uh, got this managed here pretty well. Obviously, I don't want it laying on the uh, air filter, so we're gonna have to secure it up here. But at this point, it looks like we just need to run power and get this bumper back on, man. Right here on the power wire. Okay, so if you're going to go the route, you know, with what they give you inside the box, then... So you're going to have your uh, a switch like this, guys. And, you know, this is optional, it says. But, you know, it's, uh, I leave it on the whole time. You can control the brightness and turn the app on and off. You can control like the, the lit kit with the app. So that's why I'm gonna redo this system. I'm gonna buy a fuse tap kit and get rid of a lot of this uh, excess wire. But you obviously, you're gonna have two power wires and one ground, it's pretty simple. Plug it in right there. And then there is a ground right here. The first ground goes right there. And the second ground goes up here by the hood latch right there. And then let me take this off so I can show you where to connect the power. The power goes right there, guys. You see those three black bolts, the one to the far left, right next to the left of the uh, 200 amp fuse, whatever that is, that's where you're gonna connect the power. That's it. It's really, really simple. We got it working, man. The only thing I don't like about the system is it did not come with a wire tap for the fuse box. I feel like that would have eliminated a lot of the slack possibly, I don't know. I'm ready to put the bumper back on. But yeah, so we got that all tied up. Everything's secure. I fastened everything down, snapped it down. We got plenty of slack. I did not run like this whole thing behind here because the radiator's right there. It's gonna get extremely hot. So I wanted this wire to kind of be outside a little bit more away from the radiator. This is like hollow inside. So it's also protected from the radiator. Came back out here again. This is very important right here. The conduit that it comes with, I zip tied it. I have it perfect to where it's not gonna be touching any of these lines that get really, really hot. We got it done. I think it's well worth it. If you come around to the front here, man, we got everything uh, double check. All of our clips are in. The JV4 wire management, I mean, it could be a little bit better, but like, again, like I said, there's a lot of excess power wire that they give you, but you can easily go to the auto parts store, hardware store, whatever, and get yourself a fuse tap, not a big deal. This thing's screaming right now. So we just went over everything. Everything looks good, everything's tight. We got these back in. Brand new engine air filters, 
PNP adapters are on. I'm gonna do a separate video, like I said, for the EWGs. It's done, guys. Step back here and take a look. I'll put the lights off. Over here. No. But I got a video editing. <laughs> this is what it looks like. So actually, dude, I'm really, really liking the white. Ooh. And especially when we get an intercooler, a bigger intercooler, I think it's gonna really show that off. Plus we, we have two more slots to run. Yeah, RGB connectors we can run. So we have options to add more stuff, but honestly, uh, it took me a while to give in to these lit kits. I really was like, eh, I don't know, man. I just want functionality. I was just gonna do the snorkels. All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap it up for this one. There's gonna be more coming on the Velocitech snorkels. I'm gonna play around with some settings and stuff like that, but yeah, this took uh, a few hours, to be honest with you. I'm not a mechanic either, but we figured it out. If I can do it, you can do it. I think it's fun getting your hands dirty, working on your car. That's part of the game. We didn't break anything, thank God, so that's always good. But uh, again, I'm gonna be doing some more videos, some noise cancellation stuff. We got some 060, digs, track, all-wheel drive dyno. So make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. I appreciate you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.